Look who's here. The beloved Trailblazer and the charming March 7th. You came to the Alchemy Commission today. Oh, I get it. You are here with March to visit her masters, aren't you? Exactly. How are my masters doing at the moment? Unfortunately, only one master is here. I'm doing fine. I'm just following the doctor's advice. <laughs> Miss Bailu said I could take a stroll, so here I am. Your master Yenching wasn't as lucky. He's probably still in bed. Considering the intense battle with Hule, and then with General Feishao, <laughs> the rigorous sparring session with her. His small body couldn't take it anymore. Master Yun Li! Didn't you also engage in combat? <laughs> the little babies from the Lafu just don't have the resilience that us kids from the Juming have. I heard from Modza about the tough battle against the wolf troopers. Uh, you fought alongside Modza. Did you get hurt? I heard a few versions of the story from the Cloud Knights who were there. The number of wolf troopers went from a few dozen to thousands. And the number keeps rising. It's becoming more absurd by the minute. Yunli, go and lie down. Got it, Lingsha. What about that smiley fox healer and the guy with the hood? <sighs> Thank goodness you and the others found Yao Cho. He lost a lot of blood and needs to rest properly. He and Maoza are seriously wounded. I've had to forcibly confine them to the Alchemy Commission. All three from the Aoqing are critically injured. But fortunately, the Xianzhou Laofu has a miraculous healer lady. It's a silver lining in this misfortune. Ah, oh, it looks like the entire delegation from the Xianzhou Yaoqing is gathered at the Alchemy Commission. Why don't we go see General Fei Xiao and bring her some fruit? I would normally say no, because they need to rest. But, alas, what can you do when the two of them have a leader who is just as restless? General Fei Xiao just slipped out of the recovery room. She thinks she's so sneaky, but I know everything that happens in the Alchemy Commission. If you're looking to meet her, the Lunarescent Depths might be your best bet. I spotted her heading that way earlier. The sound of those footsteps. They must belong to General Feishao. Out and about, despite the doctor's orders. What a coincidence. Someone else who refuses to listen to the doctor's orders. Well, being a doctor myself, I don't think my knowledge of my own body is inferior to the Dragon Lady's. The healer does not heal himself. Don't try to act tough in front of me. <sighs> I'm sorry, Chao Chao. I didn't expect you to use poison that way. What a miscalculation. <sighs> if only I'd found you sooner. If only I hadn't sent you to the shackling prison. The way you're speaking, is this really the Fei Xiao I know? Or could it be a Borison assassin, imitating your voice to take my life? <sighs> Zhao Cho, your eyes. You can't see anymore, can you? I can still clearly hear the sound of the waves. That's enough for me. Don't blame yourself. You know what I'm more concerned about. Has your body had any changes since you swallowed the Crimson Moon? I'm not sure. There don't appear to be any changes. However, the many doubts that once plagued me have dissipated. 
I never thought I'd live to hear you discuss your health again. But thanks to Morza and that child, the price I've paid seems trivial compared to what we've achieved. I hold no grievances, Fei Xiao. I am content. I don't know how to offer words of comfort, nor do I know much about curing others' ailments. I am just a warrior, so my pledge to you is simple. And I... For an eye. So you were here too. In this vast universe, there's bound to be someone who can heal your eyes. I'll find them. But until then... The threat behind all this chaos needs to be dealt with. You must already have some ideas. Let them out. The resurgence of the Sanctus Medicus and the gathering of the Borison are merely distractions orchestrated by an unseen force meant to divide the Alliance's attention. Unfortunately, they picked the wrong fight this time. Once we return to the Yao Qing, I'll personally lead the Verdant Knights into battle. I vow to take down a Lord Ravager and teach the Ruined Legion the true meaning of the hunt. <sighs> I knew it. You've always been so impatient. I apologize for my tardiness once again. The Alchemy Commission detained me for some time for a health examination. They released me only after ensuring I was in good condition. <laughs> General, seeing you safe and sound puts our minds at ease. Hule's escape caused significant upheaval and forced the war dance to be put on hold. A truly unforeseen disaster. Fortunately, the younger generation showed their valor. They bravely tackled the crisis, putting an end to the disaster and providing a glimmer of hope in a dire situation. Before Master Diviner Fu Xuan's departure for the Yutre, I consulted with her about the war dance. She left a note stating, The hexagram oscillates between thunder and heaven. A sign of great power, assuring us that we would successfully navigate any challenges. She advised me to trust the younger generation's abilities and let them lead. Her predictions, it appears, have come true. It's just... The Sienjo Luo Fu's long-standing duty of keeping Hula imprisoned ended with his death on the Sky Splitter. This event is likely to bring much criticism from the Alliance's upper ranks. However, Hule's demise might actually be a blessing in disguise. Broadcasting this news could derail the Borison's resurgence and quash the ambitions of those who wish to take advantage of his return. Hand over Hule's remains to the Xianzhou Yao Qing, and I'll handle the explanations to the Alliance. But what about the war dance? While the Wolf Hunt mission was a success, the events on the Sky Splitter remain a secret. However, the news of the Borison's attacks on the streets will spread like wildfire. The war dance was interrupted, so it must be reconvened. As for the people who witnessed the attacks, beyond placating them, we also need to show them the Sienjo Cloud Knight's fearless dedication. On the war dance's opening day, Rogue Borison attempted to stir up panic, but was swiftly neutralized by the Merlin's Claw and the Cloud Knights. A genuine tale of heroism that will captivate and calm the public. 
as Elder Huaya suggests. The Law Fu will do its best to heal the wounded and compensate those who were affected. We aim to reopen the war dance in the coming weeks. This settles the immediate concerns on the Law Fu, but my thoughts linger on the orchestrator behind these events. From the onset of the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis, the Xianzhou Law Fu has experienced numerous disturbances directly linked to the Lord Ravager Fantilia. Her attempt to infiltrate the Xianzhou with the Borisen and sway the Law Fu preceptors to join the Sanctus Medicus's insurrection was unsuccessful. But I have a feeling that she is indifferent to the success of her plans. Rather than outright victory, Fentilia's motives seem to lie in breeding discord and chaos among allies. Should the Alliance fail to mend these rifts, it risks disintegrating into a pile of sand. The goal of the Xianzhou Alliance has not changed for thousands of years. Perhaps we should point the weapon in our hand toward this new adversary. I plan to bring this matter before the Marshal following the war dance. With Elder Huayang's insight, one wonders how the Marshal will react. It's clear we're engaged in a game of chess not seen in thousands of Amber Eras. A game where even the strategists become pawns in battle. Where the stakes are as high as the fates of countless stars in the sky. <laughs> Predicting the Marshal's decision is beyond me, yet she's well aware of our concerns. She has tasked General Yao Guang with performing extrapolations day and night to gauge the situation comprehensively. We gather today not just to tackle the Law Fu's predicaments, but also to address a matter requiring our collective presence. Yao Guang has sent a message from the Xianzhou Yuchui informing us that she wishes to share the results of recent calculations she made within the Matrix. Ching Yuin, I'd like to borrow the seat of Divine Foresight's chessboard for this purpose. Seer strategist thinking of us or thinking of the fates we're destined for? The Merlin's Claw. As blunt as always. Though not everyone's cup of tea, huh? You once told Jing Yuan, you're lucky that I'm the one who came this time. If it were the Seer strategist, this conversation might not be so friendly. I'm intrigued. Did the conversation really come to pass? <laughs> I've never heard anyone mention that the Decalite reflection barrier could eavesdrop on even the quietest whispers. It appears that the Marshal sent not just two generals to the Luofu, but an uninvited third guest as well. <laughs> oh, people have been saying that Mr. Jing Yuan's intellect shines as brightly as the Seer strategists. Hmm. With the Luofu caught in such strife, Yuchui couldn't just stand by and watch. Seer strategist, our time with the Yellow Bell is limited. Let's get straight to the point. All right. Thanks to Mr. Jing Yuan, the interrogation of the two prisoners on the Yuchui has concluded. Mr. Jing Yuan's speculations were correct. Of the crimes they confessed to, planting a Stellaron on the La Fu was a complete fabrication meant to mislead. Their real aim was to secure a meeting with the Marshal to present their Godslayer Protocol, a strategy they firmly believe in. And what was this grand strategy proposed by Jing Liu and that traveler? <sighs> the narrative they painted was vast and difficult to put into words. It all revolves around the coffin of the blonde traveler. To be precise, it's the remnants of the propagation. 
The remains of the swarm author? More accurately, it's a fragment of the divine body. In the future they depicted, this fragment serves as the final nail, sealing the fate of the plague's author and securing its doom. Before reaching that point, battling the gods necessitates a larger alliance. Hence, they sought out an ally for the Sianjo. I assume you've all heard of the famed Genius Society member number 81, Ron May, haven't you? The I of the Yuchui has just seen this uninvited guest arrive on the Sianjo Lafu. Three, two, one. Right on time. Now, as for the best way to receive our distinguished guest, I'll leave that in your capable hands. Do you remember your name? My name is Ting Yun. I serve as an amicassador of the Whistling Flames Merchant Guild on the Sianjo Lafu. Opportunity. Let's check out the backstage of the Sky Splitter. Maybe there's something exciting going on backstage that you won't be able to see from the spectator seats.
Why did you want to participate in the war dance? Because... Because... Because I was qualified to participate in you. Isn't that... Luca? Why is he here on the LaFu? That's how it works. Is that all? Luca! Didn't expect to see you here. Trailblazer? Why are you here? <laughs> I see! This is my first time leaving Bellabog to compete in outer space. Are you a friend of Mr. Lucas? Allow me to introduce myself. I am an interastral peace entertainment journalist in training, Carmella. I was supposed to follow Mr. Albert to cover the war dance together, but he's got a million things to attend to. So the tasks of interviewing the popular contenders and producing the special program fell on my shoulders. These are huge responsibilities. I've been interning for so many years. If I screw this up, I doubt I'll ever get the chance at a full-time role. Ooh, the IPC sure is harsh. <laughs> It'll be fine. It's just my boss trying to mentor me. As long as I get some shots that'll shock and awe, I'm sure I'll be able to clinch a full-time job this year. I can sense the potential of a juicy program just through Luca alone. <laughs> really? I'm not so sure about that. Why did I choose to participate in the war dance? It's a long story. You two, let's take a walk. I can tell you all about why I'm here on the way. Nat, I... How long do I have left? Not long, Luca. Best brace yourself. Is there anything else I can do? Uh, you're already at this stage. Just eat whatever you like. Oh, that won't do. I can't be gorging on garbage at this pivotal moment. It'll ruin my energy levels. <laughs> I know. You can't wait to join the finals of the Bellabog representative qualifiers. But Japard isn't a pushover either. I've been hard at work studying how Mr. Japard moves. Just wait and see. I'll defeat Mr. Japard and be the first Bellabog fighter in 700 years to qualify for a competition in space.
Luca, you've always had this bad habit of taking a hit to exploit a weakness, but Japard's much stronger than you. So remember, stay away from his punches. Master, you've been telling me that the entire trip. My ears are about to fall off. Fine, enough proud of you. But don't let the need to win weigh too heavily on you either. Even if you don't make it to that Sianjo Lofu, you've made it to the final to fight against your part. That's enough to make anyone proud. That won't do! Luca promised Hook that he has to win the final and take Hook up there to see the stars beyond. <laughs> Uh, you sure got some daydreams on you, little one. Don't worry, Master Oleg and Pitch Dark Hook the Great. I'll win this for sure. Luca, you absolutely cannot lose. You promised to take me up to visit the San Joe Lofu. Kid. You've really got to stop making promises to children. Eh, never mind. He'll just pawn his iron arm if he loses and take you up there out of his own pocket. Mr. Depard, I've always been hoping to fight you. There's no one in the overworld more worth challenging than you. I'm honored. I've also been raring to witness the strength of the legendary Luca Strongarm. Uh, I'm not great at conversation, so it's a good thing we're both warriors. We don't have to use words to understand each other. Well said, Luca. Let your determined desire for victory speak through your fists. Now oh, you got. Distance is few. We're talking. Out of it. In the name of preservation! Don't get cocky! Our position is so good for talking. Where's the applause? Let's see some sparks fly! Resistance is futile! The punches is about it. This ends here. I've lost, Mr. Japard. You were better than me, Luca. There wasn't ever any doubt in your technique and strength, but you were too concerned with winning. And that prevented you from unleashing your utmost. Uh, uh, then what am I doing here if not to attain victory? That's a question you need to ask yourself. From my experience, a person's inner voices make far too much noise, especially so during safe and quiet moments. Ironically, the voices that truly matter often become audible only in moments of pain, discomfort, and peril. When perhaps you leave your cozy hometown and head to the unfamiliar Law Fu, you will find your answer. Hold on. When I reach the Law Fu? But you won. Truth be told, I can't just drop my work and leave Bellabog. My reason for coming to this martial tournament was to verify if you were good enough to contend against competitors from other worlds. And now I see you're good enough. You're younger and more upbeat than I am. A far more appropriate image for Bellabog. Don't forget that the reason we're participating in the war dance is also to promote Urillo 6 to the rest of the cosmos. Luca, I'm entrusting the chance of attending the war dance on the Sienjo La Fu to you. Mr. Depart, please don't pity me. Chances must be earned fairly through our own strength. <laughs> You are mistaken, Luca. It is not pity. I am lending you this victory, and you will repay me by winning the war dance. I hereby announce that the contender who has earned the right to represent Bellabog in the war dance is... Luca!
Understood, Mr. Depart. Chin up. Let's go. We should head to Klopoff Fort and meet with the Supreme Guardian. Hello, Luca. Uh, Lady Branya. Uh, uh, hi? Uh, sorry, I grew up in the underworld, so I'm not versed in etiquette of any sort. No need for formalities. You probably know nothing about the Lafu. The place you're heading to, correct? Let us take this opportunity to discuss it. I've always been a little curious. Though Yurlo 6 has restored contact with the outside worlds, we've always just been communicating with the IPC. Why are we suddenly participating in this fighters tournament in this Lofu place? Not long ago, Bellabog's interstellar comm space resumed operations. A month ago, we received an invitation with a highly distorted signal. The Sienjo Lafu cordially invites Yarillo Six's warriors to join the war dance. We've just resumed outside contact, and the way the IPC describes it, the cosmos has long forgotten us. Why would the Xianzhou so eagerly send an invitation to a city that has been buried in time? My guess is that it's because we had communications with many worlds before the Eternal Freeze. Luca, have you heard of the story of Igor Haft? Oh, you mean the legendary warrior? Of course I have! I'll never tire of the story where he led the 8th Iron Legion and engaged in a furious battle against invaders from beyond the sky! That's him! When the Eternal Free subsided, Linksy, uh, <clears throat> Lynx, took the opportunity to explore the ruins of the ancient city of Maslanitsa. A few months ago, she found a lone grave outside the public graveyard. The grave had no body, just a robot arm and a cracked pendant with an embedded gemstone. An IPC worker said that the arm was tech from the old world. As for the stone, it's a Sienjo implement called a Jade Abacus. Oh, I've heard about that. Miss Lynx thinks it's Igor's grave. That's right. The epitaph on the tombstone confirms that hypothesis. The Fido Igor Haft once left Urelo 6 before the invasion, and then he returned home to join the resistance against the aggressors. No one knows what he did after he left Urelo 6, and why he decided to come back. <sighs> Maybe Igor had been to the Shinzo? That's why they sent us an invitation? Maybe Igor even attended the war dance! The Sienjo people have long lives, so it wouldn't be something that happened long ago for them. Long story short, regardless of why the Sienjo Alliance invited us, joining this war dance is of august meaning to Balabog. It symbolizes a chance to introduce ourselves to the cosmos once again, a heroic kingdom that survived both the Legion and the Eternal Freeze with tenacity. Also, if we can leverage this opportunity to establish an amicable exchange with the Sienjo Alliance, it may provide us with more bargaining power when dealing with the IPC. Lady Branya, I'm not well-educated, so I don't really know such matters of grandiosity. All I know is that I must achieve glory for Bellabog. Well said. Oh, I almost forgot. Zila had other matters today and couldn't attend today's meeting, but she entrusted me to deliver a message. <clears throat> What's that dolt Japard up to now? Luca, you better fight like your life is on the line. If you lose, I'll make sure you wish you were really dead. The next day, I hitched a ride with an IPC transport vessel and arrived on the Shinzo Lofu. The Supreme Guardian hopes that the younger generation can go out and see other worlds. So, she arranged for Lynx and Hook to accompany me. On account of the fact that the three of us know next to nothing about interacting with other cosmic civilizations, she even instructed Svarog to tag along and be our guide. I never thought that, while we were processing our entry papers at the Skyfaring Commission, we would run into another surprise. 
we've double-checked. This invitation did indeed come from the Lothu, but after checking the stamp, this invitation was dated 400 years ago. 400 years ago? How is that possible? We just received this invite not too long ago. We can assume that this invite was delayed in transmission and only reached us after the restoration of communications. I'm afraid this Arumaton is right. You received an invitation that is 400 years late. So, we weren't invited. Oh, no. This trip has all been for nothing, then. How am I going to explain this to Lady Branya and Mr. Japard? They have high hopes for me. According to calculations, the thing that we should be considering first is not emotions, but... If we are not invited guests, then we will be responsible for all costs incurred while staying here. Conclusion. We cannot afford it. You all misunderstand. The Sianjo La Fu is indeed hosting a martial arts competition called the War Dance. Whether you receive an invitation or not, anyone who wants to can register to compete in the War Dance. The sole distinction is that invited guests, upon qualifying through a test, get to partake in the prestigious Ringmaster's Challenge, facing off against the Sienjo Lafu's Ringmaster. As for ordinary contestants, they will have to participate in knockout stages and rise through the ranks to reach the ultimate stage of the Ringmaster's Challenge. To challenge the Lafu's Ringmaster? That's the ultimate goal for all the contestants? Hmm, that's right. Although you didn't receive an invitation, you can still participate in the war dance. You'll definitely uh, have a chance to win and gain honor. But Mr. Svarog has a point. According to calculations, we can't afford this. <laughs> Money can't buy relationships. This invitation that's been delayed for 400 years must be a marvelous twist of fate. And since fate has brought you all here to the La Fu, we will not fail in our hospitality. Please be assured that I will report this incident and ensure that the Bellabog representative team receives the same accommodation and treatment as all other esteemed Invited guests. However, Mr. Luca, you will still have to participate in all the knockout stages and work your way up to the final stage. Really? At your expense? <laughs> the heart of the war dance is all about celebrating martial arts and fostering friendships. My friends, how could we possibly allow you to fret over food and the lodging. Thank you, Miss Chikwe! I'll treasure this opportunity! And just like that, by the grace of Miss Chikwe, I didn't die before achieving success! I just learned this old Shenzo saying a few days ago. I've successfully become a competing fighter in the war dance! Luca? You are absolutely radiating with newsworthiness. I I've decided to follow you and report on your progress throughout the competition. <sighs> if only everything were as smooth as when it started. If I had participated in the competition these past few days, I wouldn't be so anxious right now. It's been days since I've registered. I haven't participated in a single match yet. Today's my first one. But forget about competing. I feel like I'm struggling with just normal, everyday life. I'm already halfway into the realm of needing help with daily activities. Why don't people accept shields? You can pay for things by just swiping a gemstone trinket? Why doesn't anyone look their age? I approached this girl with pointy ears to ask her for directions, and I called her little girl, and she got mad. She said she was over 340 years old. 
So now, I'm even afraid to talk to people. Oh, and meals. I'm really not used to the food on the Shenzo. Yesterday, I ate a bowl of chili oil beef offal stew for dinner. And today, I've been blowing up the toilet with my flaming rockets. Ooh. <laughs> I feel ya, Luca. I, I also can't get used to the food on the Sienjo. Miss Carmella, you can't get used to the food either? Uh, well, n not exactly. I it's because I'm an Intellitron. Huh. Uh, sorry, please continue. Anyways, this is the first time in my life I've felt so useless. I can't even do something as trivial as asking for directions. Thank you for comforting me. Actually, I did do some mental preparations. It's my first time going out to the world, but I didn't expect it to be so overwhelming that I can't keep my footing. Where are your Bellabogian buddies? Lynx went on an archaeological escapade. She wants to try to learn about Igor's history before he returned to Yurillo 6 with that gemmed pendant. Oh, Sparog took Hook out to play. He's really good with kids. I'm so irate and I'm about to start my first match. I'm in worse shape than ever. The next opponents are several Cloud Knights. Oh, they're like the Silvermane here. Oh, why am I explaining this to you? You should know better than me. I'm the only one who doesn't know anything. Why not check out who your first opponent is before the competition starts? It's better than wallowing here, as it'll just make you more anxious. <sighs> Thanks for talking to me and cheering me up. Sure, I'll head off and meet my first opponent. Luca has regained his energy. Fool health revive, oh yeah! Those are my opponents for my first match. Isn't that Sushong? Huh? You know her? opponent, Luca. Hello everyone, I'm Luca, and I come from Bellabog. I'll be exchanging fists with you guys in the ring. I, I hope we'll be able to take this chance to become friends. Bellabog. Oh, I, I think Lolgoy mentioned it before, but I can't seem to remember. What kind of place is it? Oh, wow, <laughs> I can't imagine that. I'm sorry, the Sienjo Yaoqing doesn't have much artificial snow. It's okay if you haven't heard of us. I'll make sure the whole cosmos remembers Bellbog's name with my fists. In that case, I'll keep my eyes peeled. Oh, Sushong used an idiom! I'm the journalist who's reporting on Luca. I it's fine, just, just chat like you always do and ignore me. I I'm just snapping shots for material. Are you here to join the tournament with Mr. Luca? Could Luca be the fighter that you've been training? The iron arm on this red-haired boy looks like it's got power. Definitely capable of taking down a kid with one punch at a time. Uh, but we're not kids. The Cloud Knight's tactical creed is to complement one another and overwhelm with numbers! That's called a united front, got it? My strategy... Uh, sorry. It's my first time participating in the war dance. I'm the only one in my team, so I don't have any strategy to speak of. It appears our otherworldly friend requires some enlightenment. 
How about this? The match is starting in an hour. I'll give you some real-life tactical pointers in the ring. Sleepy Su Shong, that's over the line! You were supposed to be our coach when we invited you here. How could you run off to the opponent's corner? It's just... Our friend from afar requires some assistance, that's all. Don't we Cloud Knights also earnestly help out and provide direction to the travelers we encounter on our daily patrols? Ah, it'll be your fault if we lose. Enough chit-chat, get back to your prep. I appreciate it. Thank you, new friend whose age I won't try to estimate. We're heading back to the lounge. See you in the ring. So, the coach of my opponent for my first match is going to give me tactical advice in the ring? I am bewildered by the Shenzhou people's hospitality. What a kind-hearted person. This is your first match, Luca. You're bound to win. You're gonna be fine. You're the boxing champion of Bellabog. The Clown Knights, aren't they just the silver main guards? I'm pretty confident of my odds against them. Except Mr. Chapard. Luca, you're the best. You're not gonna lose. Go get him! Luca, ready for your first match? I think I more or less, maybe, perhaps, I'm ready. Luca, have more confidence in yourself. Cloud Knights, Lil Gwen Support Association. And representing the city of Elba, Luca Stronga. Between these two groups of contenders, who will emerge victorious? We wait with bated breath. Come at us, Mr. Luca. My team will show you the prowess of the Cloud Knights formation. Simple. You just gotta stand at the byline and give your team tactical instructions. Of course, being a spectator is the easiest. Little Gwei's up there in the stands right now, watching us duke it out from her vantage point. Oh, she's such a baddie. Hear that, everyone? Little Gwei is somewhere in the audience watching us. Brothers, we mustn't disappoint our little Gwei! Woohoo! For little Gwei, we will emerge victorious! If I lose, those people dear to me will be disappointed too. <sighs> Looks like we have to give it our all. Ooh, if the Cloud Knights fail, little Gray will be disappointed. If the Cloud Knights win, our friends from Bellabog will be disappointed. <laughs> no matter the ending, disappointment inevitably awaits one party. <laughs> oh, welcome to the cruel world of competition. For little Gray, Forma! Let me remind you, on the war dance stage, the admin 
atmosphere of the spectators is very important. Show off your flashy moves and make the audience... Do we still have the upper hand? Ready for another? Don't get cocky! Brothers and sisters, it's time for us! for you. Momentum creation. Am I hallucinating? Small fry. Step out of it. Turn it up. Been down once again. The opponent is not leaving any openings for Luca. Data should net mark effectively. Time for a good old counter attack. The punches decide. Come, let's steal the winning blow. Don't. Looks like Little Play Support Association is ready to end this match once and for all. No. Can it be? Down. Hey, coach! Just stand there staring! Then should I go up there myself and defeat you? Ugh, of course not. Come, let me show you how it's done. Enemy data secured. Netmark effective. Time for a good old counter attack. Ready to lose yourself? You can fight it. Or rock with it! Where's the applause? Let's see some sparks fly! <laughs> Just in time. Just a little something. Think nothing. <sighs> Ready to jam. Keep up! Time for a good old counter attack! Turn 
Take more than medicine. Enemy data secure. Network. Time for good old counter. Yes. Ready to lose yourself? You can fight it or rock with it. Where's the applause? Let's see some sparks fly. <laughs> Enemy targets detected. <gasps> to me. I feel a little strange. I just saw those cloud knights grow fangs and claws like they were demons. Hey, show a little sportsmanship. You've already won, so what's with the insults? Sorry, I didn't mean it that way. I just feel like everything I'm seeing is a hallucination. Are you too stressed out? When I was younger, every time before the day of exams, it also seemed like my textbooks grew fangs and talons, as if they were demons. Uh, your situation is clearly different. If you're too stressed out, how about a bottle of Sweet Dream Soda? This is the CN Joe version of Soul Glad, and it helps you sleep better, too. Grab some Sweet Dream Soda. A sweetness that's bound to last. <laughs> Don't worry. Even Intelligons and IPC mechs can participate. The CN Joe's War Dance has essentially become a tech fair. I feel much better. I'm very sorry if I said anything rude just now. I really think those Cloud Knights are a cut above the rest. Uh, excessive compliments can seem disingenuous if overdone, pal. We're just your typical rank and file. In terms of martial prowess, the average Cloud Knight appears to match even the most elite Silvermane squads. Uh, your praise is making me all confused now. Wait. Could it be that we're actually pretty strong? Those Cloud Knights said they were just ordinary soldiers. They were tough as heck, and yet they're just the Lofu's most ordinary fighters. <laughs> Urillo 6 has been isolated from the cosmos for so long that I'm clueless about things everyone else takes for granted. Forget strength. Even the gap in everyday knowledge isn't something I can get past overnight. But no matter how wide that gap is, I must wield my fists. I must fight and I must win. Uh, right now, Lady Bronya, Master Oleg, Zila, all the people who stayed in Bellabog working day and night to keep it up and running. Mr. Depard placed his faith in me, entrusted me with the chance to represent Bellabog. I cannot disappoint him. Any of them. I must offer nothing less than victory. So, I would like to officially ask you to be my coach. Because you're strong, and you know plenty of strong people. When you were pretending to be my coach in the last match, you were a great help. I want to bridge the gap between myself and this world. Trailblazer, will you help me? Thank you, coach. I'll do my best to keep up and train seriously.
will do everything I can to assist you. You'll both become the most legendary coach and fighter team there is. And I'll create a special feature that will finally bag me that permanent role. Oh, man. Miss Carmella, why is your dream making me tear up, too? Uh, uh, enough about me. I'll brief you on the rules for the next match first. 